Welcome back to I'm a So Angry. I'm back with Who Are You? Henry. And what do you have today? I have an invoked Prank Kid deck profile for you guys. And how is this for the new band list? Uh, it's pretty good. Um, Alistair by itself is just really nutty right now with a new card that just came out from the recent set, Battles of Legend. So I just try to incorporate that in the Prank Kid strategy. And you have a little bit more of a higher, higher ceiling. And you just have more accessibility to a better play going first. Okay. Yep. It's much better now because all the other decks are hit, right? Yeah, basically you pretty much like you have to play through a roar and a rage less often going second against Salomon Great. Uh -huh. You don't have to play through the, the, the full Thunderboard as often. And they can't really open the combos consistently anymore. And you don't have to play through Rusty anymore too far. Oh man, that's crazy. Yeah. So thank God for that, right? Mm -hmm. Deck profile. Right, let me see this thing. So, uh, to start, my philosophy has kind of changed a little bit when building prank kids. Um, I decided to go with the invoked engine over the hero engine. Now, the hero engine, what it offers, it offers a little bit more flexibility because you have access to Prisma, right? Yeah. And you have access to Blazeman. So, Prisma could be a prank kid, Blazeman could be a poly. But I wanted to kind of focus my deck on making a Mechaba going first next to my play. So, this way, when I make my prank kids play, I'm going to make sure that I can control the board because sometimes you can lose to a random call by the grave. Yeah, so I wanted to be able to protect my dweller, protect my toad, and make a mechaba on the side so this way I can continue playing prank kids without having to worry about a one call by the grave or something. So Alistair is just still, for, still very good. He gets you the invocation, which is almost um, almost poly, but it's actually good, better than poly in some senses. Uh, it's a level 4 to make dweller at the end of your play, and it also searches meltdown, which can chain block ash. Perfect. Yep. So uh, two Alistair. Then we play three of all the prank kids. Okay. Uh, three fancies, three dropsies, three lampsies, and three roxies. So we all know what these do. They all special another one from the deck. This one foolishes, this one gains a thousand, this one minus 500 to burn to your opponent, and this one bash your card to draw a card. So, uh, yeah, they're all pretty good still. Um, Which thing is the best one? In my opinion, uh, Fanzies is definitely my favorite because it allows you to play through some brick hands. It allows you, if you only open this with uh, the Gains Confusion or another extender, you can foolish another monster and then you can summon a rocket and then summon back the monster that you foolish. And it actually helps you, uh, it also, the same thing applies when you get hand trapped on your second prank kid. So if you fuse away this and say this, right, and, and you go into a rocket, and they, uh, they ash the second one in the chain link, you can foolish maybe like a, a lamp seize, right? And then you can go rocket, special back the lamp seize, and you still have that extra name anyway. So it allows you to play around ash, basically. So that's my favorite one. Um, and then, speaking of ash, uh, only three ash for the hand trap. That's it? Usually I would go for more impactful cards. I, I would maybe main like free droll, but the format still right now is very undefined. So I don't want to play a card. Like I was going to play Gamma as well, but I, I want to see how Gamma is in the format before I just play it. Obviously, Ash will always be good, and I, I just want to play a card that exactly is good in every matchup. So, three Ash. Now for the spell cards, I'm playing Place at three again. Um, I'm playing less flexibility because I'm not playing the hero engine anymore. So this is the closest you can get to playing more prank kids. Uh, and then I'm playing two magical meltdown. Meltdown is actually just broken because if you fuse um, with this on the field, even if you're fusing a prank kid monster, your opponent can't respond to the summon. So when you go when you summon a prank kid monster, a fusion, you go you activate your prank kids in their effects. They can't ash your prank kids because your opponent can't respond to the fusion. Oh, okay. Yep, and it's also really good on your opponent's turn when you go into um, Battle Butler. You go into Battle Butler on your opponent's turn. Uh, usually, since it's not an effect on summon uh, to tag out, uh, usually wouldn't be your opponent would have a chance to respond to ashing the third. Uh, so you go, if you fuse away, right? If you fuse away this, this, and this, you go chilling one, chilling two, chilling three, and they would be they would have a response to ash this or respond to it at least. But if you have melt on the field, they can't. And then you go you go chilling for Butler because they can't respond. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it does help you play around through different scenarios. And then to go get them, we 
by the one terraforming because it's that one. This is the only hit for the entire archetype is that uh, terraforming is that one. Yep. And then we still have set rotation. That. Yep. Nice. Definitely set rotation. One of the better cards. Uh, then, for the polyans, we play three invocation. Oh, well, not three? Uh, uh, in this build, it definitely takes the place of poly just because of the fact that if you open one with Alistair, it's good. Because if your Alistair gets stopped, you're guaranteed Mechaba with, the, with some cards that we're playing uh, from the new set. And um, also, when you open um, when you open it and you don't get hand trapped, you get the whole prank kit combo plus out pl plus uh, Mechaba. Well, perfect, so, perfect. Yeah, so this is like the better poly. So we're only playing one of the original poly. Oh, you also play that too? Yeah, we're just playing one. I was just wanted an extra one, kind of similar how you used to play three and one. Uh, it's the opposite now because this one gets into uh, more plays than this does. Um, and you have so many ways to get to this. You have Meltdown, you have the one Terraforming, the one set rotation, and two Alistair. Yep. So you have plenty of ways to get to this. So I never brick. Uh, I brick more with, with multiple polys than I do with none. So um, yeah, that's the correct ratio in my opinion. Still pick two Pandemonium. You don't really want to open up multiples of this one. It's searchable. Um, but you want to play two because you want to be able to set two on your opponent's turn. So uh, two of those. And then we play for the extenders, still three of the best card in the deck, that's three. about three instant fusion. Again, it's a starter and it's also a soul charge, so it's pretty good. And then we play two pranks, uh, helps you shuffle back three and draw a card, keep it recycling. I also play um, three desires. Draw, um, draw. Yep, draw, draw. This sounds a little bit weird. This is kind of a different approach not taking to the deck. I think it's very useful to take different approaches to playing a deck, right? Because if you're very hard-headed, then you'll never figure out how to get better. So, um, I used to be very against this card because I was playing the heroes. The heroes are very flexible, however, they are very fragile. One of the advantages of not playing the hero engine anymore is because you can play this card. And you play uh, three... You play three invocations, so you can banish with ease with the desires. You never really have to worry. So, um... I mean, if you play this card correctly, you get your searches first, then you get desires, maybe draw into an Alistair or something like that. Uh, you just want to see your combo pieces. I'd rather uh, be playing the game than not playing the game. If you draw into another one off of the first one, you can balance the other one with Roxy's. Um, there's a little bit of wiggle room there. So, uh, three uh, desires, the one upstart because we're playing a 39 card deck, and then the one trap, which I didn't want to play, but the reason why I'm playing is this is because, not only because you can use the effect to banish and then uh, shuffle away your guys back, but also because you can search this with Dodo Doodle Doo, or you can send it with Manzies and add it back with Dodo Doodle Doo or Bow Wow, and then you have a trap in your hand to negate with Mecha Book. So when you're nice. playing against a trap deck, you get Altergeist or Paleozoics, which are going to be seeing more play with the new Princess cards being released, um, you want to be able to have a trap negate with Mecha Book. Okay. That is why I'm playing that. Uh, and then for the extra deck, I am playing uh, one battle, well, uh, one uh, battle and butler, two rocket, only one washer. I had to make some cuts because now we're playing the invoked engine, so we're playing one mechaba and one purgatrio. You don't really need multiple mechabas because you're not going to be able to make multiples on the first turn, and also you're just trying to kill your opponent with moral sword, so it's never really going to come up where you're going to need a second one. Uh, Purgatrio, I play because you can game your opponent with it. Also, because you can banish something from Salomon Great Graveyard, like a Spinny or a Gazelle or something. So, um, yeah, I think this is the correct lineup. So that's it for the fusions. Then for the Xyz, we just play the, the one Toad and the one Dweller. Dweller is still insane. Uh, Toad is still good against decks like Sky Strikers and Control decks. So, I uh, love those. Then for the Links, I play Dodo Doodle Doo, uh, two Bow Wow. Park, and then one Boral Sword, and then there are two cards left here, and uh, these are the cards that kind of give Prank Kids a little bit more flexibility. It's the new card, Solomon Great Almirage. Ooh, okay. So Solomon Great Almirage, it allows you to make Mechaba no matter what, because you have uh, Alistair, you go normal summon the Alistair, uh, you search invocation. Uh, now if you have another invocation in your hand, so you can do the Prank Kid play, and then you can combo, but say your prank kid play gets stopped, you can go uh, Alistair, grab Invocation, then you can link uh, Alistair away into Almirage, um, and then you can link away Almirage into Secure Garden. Ah, there you go, Secure Garden. So, uh, Secure Garden is good because it's a light, and then you go Invocation, uh, banish the Alistair and the Secure Garden, uh, and make your, uh, your Mecha Blow. So yeah, it's it's uh, pretty easy to do. Uh, we'll do a more in-depth uh, combo video okay. to under, to better teach the intricacies.
hidden intricacies of the deck. Um, and uh, basically all the combos and uh, kind of just show off how the deck is viable, this format, and just show all the different combos and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's pretty much what we got today. Uh, catch the combo video coming up next. Awesome. Cool. Thank you very much. Bye.